Bloom News Brief. More info at fullandbloom.com. In a brand new interview with the Let There Be Talk podcast, guitarist Vivian Campbell talked about his days in Dio on his Dio audition. Ronnie had most of the song Holy Diver written, and so he kind of showed me that riff. Then we just kind of jammed on that forever. When it came to the solo section, and I still have this cassette tape. Somewhere in a box, I have a cassette tape of my audition. And I remember listening to it with Ronnie a year or two later after the audition. And when it came to the solo part, I was just playing and playing. Ronnie was rolling a joint in the corner of the room and I'd look over at him and he'd go like, keep going, keep going. And I'm like, shit, because every guitar player has all their fancy licks, all the notes. And I'm like, shit, I've got nothing left. But he says, keep going, keep going. And so I start playing really basic, like double stop Chuck Berry stuff, like the really simple kind of stuff because while I'm playing I'm trying to think what can I do that's more exciting but when I listened to that cassette tape a year or two later with Ronnie he pointed at the cassette player and said that's it when you started playing like that that's when I knew you were the guitar player for me but that was the moment that I'd run out of ideas I was just treading water thinking fuck I've got to come up with something else That very night I was hired. Ronnie explained to us what was going on. I've quit Black Sabbath with Benny. He said, I've got a record deal, which I got as a solo artist, but he said, I don't want to be a solo artist. I want to have a band. He said, however, I want to call it Dio for name recognition. He had the song Holy Diver, and he had half an idea for another song, which turned out to be Don't Talk to Strangers. But other than that, we had to go to LA and write a record. So that's what we did the next month on Ronnie James Dio's promise. The money was pretty grim, and that was the whole reason I got fired from Dio, because I was the squeaky wheel. In London, at that rehearsal room, when Ronnie sat us down and said, this is what we're going to do. He had promised us that by the third record, it would be an equity situation, because basically we had to work for next to nothing for the earlier records. And the reason I bought a Ferrari was for three reasons. One, it was a common used garden variety, the cheapest one. Number two, the exchange rate when I bought it. I was getting paid in dollars and the exchange rate was very favorable at that time. And number three, I didn't spend a penny. Everything I earned, like my per diems or whatever, went right into a bank account. At the time, I was still living with my parents in Ireland. So when I wasn't working with Dio, I'd fly home and be like, hey mom, hey dad, I'm back. So I didn't have any overhead, no bills. So I kept everything. It was like years earlier when I saved up to buy that Les Paul. I just focused on it. I wanted the Ferrari, so I saved up for a few years and I got it. But the money situation in Dio, we earned less than the crew. So we didn't get any of those records. We didn't get any of the t-shirts. We got none of the ticket sales. We got none of the record sales. I wrote some of the songs off the Holy Diver record, but I was coerced to sign over my publishing. But we were working towards that promise, which was by the third album, it would be an equity situation. And when we started working on that third record, that's when I started saying, hey Ronnie, you got a moment? And he kept pushing it off and pushing it off. And then eventually they fired me. It was less about the money. Yeah, it would have been nice to get paid for that, but it's more principle. We have a gentleman's agreement. I uphold my end of the deal, and I I expect the same of people. Maybe I'm an idealist or an idiot for expecting that of human beings, but that's what I give. And so it was a question of principle. The promise was made and that the rest of us toiled for several years in the belief that the contract would be fulfilled, but it never was. Ultimately, Ronnie never told Wendy. Wendy was his estranged wife, but his manager, and by default, the band's manager. But she never saw it as being a band. He never explained that aspect to her. She always saw Ronnie Dio kind of like like Ozzy Osbourne, like it didn't matter who was behind him. But Ronnie should have known better. The magic of that original band, that's kind of where I really had a beef with Ronnie. He knew how good that band was. And for him to be so fearful of Wendy that he wouldn't even have the balls to tell her that, you know, this is what I want. This is what I promised the guys. This is what we're going to do. She just kind of went, no, no, you're the star. You don't need them. Get somebody else to play guitar. In a 2019 interview with Ultimate Guitar, Campbell said, when we did the Holy Diver album, we got paid $100 a week. When we started the Holy Diver tour, our pay was bumped up to $400 a week. There's a lot more interview to go. To listen to the entire interview, click the link in the description. (laughs) 